Welcome everyone to the webinar, From Mart to Card, the role of digital experiences in online delivery. Thank you for taking out your time to attend. I'm Gaurav Bhandari, digital consultant working with Robosoft, and we'll be speaking with our very own Srinidhi Rao, Senior Vice President and US GOI. Good morning, good evening everyone. Thank you for joining this webinar on online delivery and Thanks, Gaurav, for making this happen. Thanks, Srinidhi. Srinidhi, uh, before beginning the session, uh, what we have to look at is how user-friendly services have now become the necessity for customers. Uh, basically, delivery platforms are expected to simplify the ordering and delivery processes uh, to enhance the user experiences. Uh, they are doing this by either infusing new channels, experiences, technology, and much more. But uh, when we see on the other side, uh, customers which are facing poor experience are abandoning delivery apps and takeout services. Today, we've pulled out together a variety of interesting insights and I'm excited to show you what we've found. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, in today's agenda, uh, we'll cover a few different things. Most notably, the trends, consumer behavior patterns and uh, future uh, outlook of online delivery. Uh, we'll be covering the following topics uh, in the next 30 minutes. We'll start with the trends and shift in the online delivery industry. Next, uh, we look at the evolving consumer behavior in the next normal. We'll also focus on business response and reinvention to such a shift. After that, uh, we'll look uh, and we'll try to understand the future outlook for the industry. Uh, finally, we end with applying some digital lessons. Uh, the last 10 minutes will be a question and answer session. All the attendees can write down the questions in the chat window during the session and we'll take it up towards the end of the webinar. Let's start talking about our first topic, uh, the shift that has taken place in the online delivery industry due to the global COVID-19 pandemic. Sure, Gaurav. We have a bunch of interesting statistics and trends to look at. Exactly. I'm sure they are. Uh, as we see on the screen, the in-store and delivery sales for restaurants have decreased drastically. Also, the open table reservations have crashed by a considerable percentage. Uh, many of the restaurants are also offline due to lack of staff and uh, lack of demand as well. Uh, what we see, Srinidhi, with multiple research done on these lines are showing the same trends. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is due to both curfew or stay at home measures across the world, as well as the consumer hesitation to expose themselves to any health risk. The restaurants in many countries, including India going offline, can be attributed to lack of resources or movement of people across the country. Yes, uh, very true. Uh, let's look at the dramatic shift in the demand for the essential items. So the sales have shoot up for hygienic and medical masks. The overall firma category is seeing a surge and the e pharmacies uh, market is expected to grow by almost seven times from what it is now. Yeah, this was expected as the people are focusing more on health, hygiene and production after COVID-19 outbreak. Health and safety products are in higher demand. Now that's, that's kind of expected. While brick and mortar pharmacies continue as essential service during the lockdown, Consumers have switched to buying medicines online for the fear of getting infection. From this data that we see a very high demand for medicine, groceries, hygiene products, the fear of supply shortage, uh, supply storage drives over purchasing and stocking. Uh, how do you see the trends in delivery platforms? Yeah, let's look at those trends as well. So what we see here is uh, the daily app downloads of the top food delivery apps have decreased uh, again by a considerable margin. But on the other side, there has been a massive surge of downloads for apps like groceries, pharma delivery. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, we can definitely see the heat faced by the food delivery platforms and the tough times they're going through. Uh, even with the promise of no contact delivery from these providers, People are starting to understand that consistently ordering delivery in, is both expensive and quite frankly, not as safe as cooking meals within your home. Shoppers are going online to buy groceries as they look to limit contacts, but still need to accumulate 
supplies, groceries to uh, live through this uh, period of social distancing. Exactly. Uh, what's really incredible and going to be the theme throughout our discussion is just how swiftly consumer behavior is changing in the light of new information. And not just new information, but the regulations and shift towards online delivery of uh, groceries and medicines. We've done some research around that area as well. And the research shows that consumers are spending more on groceries online and the intent to buy alcohol, tobacco products is reducing considerably. Uh, we've also seen that they've been snacking more, eating more healthier than usual and becoming more health conscious. Uh, data also shows consumers have been uh, stocking up more pantry food, self staples and medicines. I I'm sure this is happening. I'm one among the consumers who has been snacking more. Uh, I'm sure you're on the healthier side, right Shrendi? Yeah, I am. Yeah, it does show, show the changing consumer behavior towards groceries, home entertainment and medicine, primarily driven by consciousness of uh, their health. I'm very sure we've all seen the same change uh, in our daily routines and buying patterns as well. Uh, saying that, we've seen how uh, the consumer behavior has changed. Now let us look at uh, the shopping patterns of the consumers and how they are changing. We see that the consumers are buying more groceries, food takeout delivery, household supplies, personal care uh, items, etc. And they are also preferring home cooked meals. Uh, there has been an uh, increase uh, in meal kit subscriptions and many consumers have switched to buying medicines online uh, with the fear of uh, getting infected. Yeah, it is surprising how the consumer responds to changes happening. And in this case, uh, there has been considerable shift in shopping behavior. Very true. Uh, but what is not surprising to me is that the consumers now clearly prefer uh, low and zero contact interactions to uh, ensure their safety. Uh, the recent data reveals uh, not only the extent of this abrupt change in preferences, but also highlights impactful trends that all brands need to consider very seriously. Uh, say uh, shoppers are considering cleanliness and sanitizing as the major priority. Uh, safety information has become a must for many and also consumers are shopping less, uh, especially in the stores. Yeah, Gaurav, many of the current changes in the customer preferences will likely last for years and may even become permanent as the world adapts itself to the COVID-19 cycles. As a result, re restaurants need to develop both short term as well as long term plans for responding these, to these threats. Uh, while these plans must be built on a low touch customer experience, they must also also include off premise strategy designed to optimize the, that experience. Brands that are more successful in doing this will not only survive the current crisis, but also thrive and gain the market share over the coming years. Definitely. A brand should rethink on the current offerings as highlighted by you and uh, they need to define a strategy to optimize all of these uh, experiences. Uh, let's now talk about what are the different kinds of activities people are doing during the lockdown. Uh, there's been a steady increase in some of the activities during the pandemic and uh, some of them are online streaming restaurant delivery, self-checkout, uh, video conferencing, spending more, uh, spending time outdoors, uh, grocery delivery, digital payments, and online games. Yeah, I'm sure we are seeing this happening in our daily lives as well. Due to lockdown, many of us could not go out and meet our friends and family, due to which, due to which there is increased usage of video conference to talk to the people and usage of uh, use of leisure time to play games or streaming and we see those trends in the market. I've heard that you know people are conducting Zoom parties and grabbing drinks over Zoom. Wouldn't be surprised if there are crazier stories around. <laughs> yeah, uh, very true. Uh, Srindi, uh, as we've seen the trends which have been uh, uh, like in line with what we are been reading uh, for quite a long time, what we would want to understand is how the industry has responded to such a dramatic change. Absolutely. What's interesting to see here is that not only the top 
on-demand delivery apps have improved their processes, various companies have entered the essential delivery space too. The changes uh, that we are seeing can be categorized into strategic, operational and engagement or communication related uh, changes. So let's look at some of the strategic uh, initiatives, right? Uh, for example, DoorDash has introduced uh, a new program to deliver essential things like paper, to paper towels, cleaning supplies, medicines uh, to the doorsteps of the consumers. Similarly, we see that uh, Zomato has collaborated with Grofers to introduce grocery delivery service across you know, multiple cities in uh, India. Uber Eats uh, has partnered with uh, Carrefour to deliver groceries in uh, Paris. Uh, we see that uh, Delivery Hero has added uh, 50,000 restaurant, 1,500 other verticals such as groceries and pharmacies into their marketplace. Instagram is doing its bit by uh, partnering with online food platforms like uh, Swiggy and Zomato to support, support small businesses in India uh, with food order stickers. Likewise, uh, many of these on-demand on -demand ride hailing service providers are also planning to deliver items from pet stores, pharmacies, and delivery, delivering convenience store items to the people's homes across the globe. Yeah. Uh, we see that all of the major delivery apps are collaborating with uh, different companies to introduce essential products uh, uh, delivery in their uh, platform. Let's also look at the operational changes. Yeah, sure. From, from an operational measure, uh, various measures have been taken by restaurants and food delivery platforms. Uh, some, of the, some of the key ones that we want to share here are safety badges, you know. Swiggy so rolled out safety badges for those who comply with highest standards of hygiene. Uh, the badges are uh, given to restaurants following best practices and that have features like temperature control, mask, sanitization, you know, sanitization after four hours, uh, and safe, keep safe packaging. Uh, similarly, uh, OneClick has introduced uh, COVID-19 trading awareness where drivers are continually being trained on respiratory hygiene, best practice, uh, proper methods, and uh, the frequency of washing their hands, as well as identifying associated symptoms. Uh, speed of service is another area where uh, helping customers to get their deliveries better, faster during the peak time, and managing the fleet capacity is becoming a major challenge for delivery companies, but they are coping up and adding additional fleet or ad making operational changes to achieve better productivity out there. Some of the pharma companies have uh, shifted their production closer to end markets in or in lower risk countries uh, so that the, the disruption to their service is uh, limited. And we have also seen uh, the growth of a concept called ghost kitchens where uh, companies in this space uh, include like companies like uh, Kitchen Unlimited or Cloud Kitchens uh, they provide you a, an area where you could, uh, you know, a full-fledged kitchen, uh, professional-grade kitchen where one can cook the food and use it, as, use it for their delivery-only service business. Uh, drive through many of the quick service chains are relying on their drive through and curbside pickup options. In fact, industry leaders are starting to recognize that drive through only may be the ultimate way to protect employees and customers in some areas. Wow, uh, that's really intriguing to see how the day-to-day -day operations have changed uh, so rapidly due to the consumer changing behavior. Uh, talking about consumer engagement and communication, which has become the most important factor after the pandemic. What we generally see is there is a lot of fear uh, in consumers about the safety aspects. Uh, could you tell us uh, about the steps uh, the companies have taken to in this regard? You're right, Gaurav. There is a need to communicate effectively to customers, especially in this, uh, in this time, uh, primarily to ensure that they feel safe ordering, ordering online or to go out and have food in the restaurants or buy groceries from the respective stores. And some of the measures that uh, the, the businesses have taken are like 
टेम्परेचर का टेम्परेचर कंट्रोल कंपनीज लाइक रेबल फूड एंड स्विगी एंड मेनी अदर फूड डिलीवरी एप्स आर यूजिंग टेम्परेचर ट्रैकर ऑन इट्स एप्स टू मेक श्योर दैट कस्टमर इज अवेयर ऑफ द बॉडी टेम्परेचर ऑफ ऑल द स्टेक होल्डर्स uh from all the way from cook to the delivery boy uh you know through the process and of course the no contact delivery is uh, is become central uh, philosophy of many of these organizations uh and they ensure that all the services and the features are focused on those aspects of it uh platforms are also accepting uh, only prepaid orders and not supporting uh any transaction at the time of delivery you know something like cash on delivery uh, per se so we helped one of our customer to implement only prepaid orders uh, in their application platform so that uh, the consumers <coughs> will have reduced contact with the partners um safety assurance uh, businesses have, have been using multiple channels to communicate uh, safety assurance uh for example swiggy has uh, three complete screens uh of their app dedicated to giving safety assurance to their users <clears throat> and we work with work across you know few of our customers in the domain in helping them strategize and uh, build implement this uh, communication aspect take away only um, most of the majority of the players have been shifted to only take away uh, also could be because of the restrictions that are put in by the city and the governments uh, this shift has helped businesses to survive uh, to an extent right and chains like uh, dominos have uh, gone a step forward and converted their entire uh, stores into uh, take away only geolocation has always been there but i think businesses are finding new ways to uh, optimize and use this the uh, geolocation and geofencing services pretty effectively either to communicate with the consumers or to optimize their uh, delivery fleet and uh, make them more and more productive these are some amazing uh, insights and it's exciting to see uh, businesses change to such a situation so rapidly Uh, Shreendi, as we saw uh, in our data of how consumers are shifting more towards digital and low-touch activities, uh, in that context, uh, how has the industry responded? Yeah, the current environment is undoubtedly high risk for restaurants uh, and stores and supermarkets. Right? However, customers won't stop looking at uh, counters counter service as a preferred option for a uh, familiar or a convenient meal. Uh, and some restaurants may even do well during this uh, uncertainty uh, and again when you look at america it's it's uh, uh, summer here and uh, schools are closed uh, so it puts more even more pressure on parents to think creative and safer ways to get out of the house with their families and kids right some of the options consumers are preferring are drive through of course a low top low touch option for procuring food and goods curbside pickup for both restaurants and stores bopes you know buy online and pick up in stores and many of the stores have uh, you know provided dedicated facilities to support that and contactless grocery pharma and food delivery so being innovative to reduce uh, wait times in the pick up experience uh, to deliver uh, orders quickly accurately uh, with minimum or zero contact is going to be paramount now we work with few of our customers in implementing this entire end to end uh, you know delivery cycle you know with with minimal uh, touch point additionally we have seen uh, digital solutions being used to manage the buyers or the crowd inside the establishments you know there are uh, apps that uh, businesses are using to keep track of the number of people inside the establishment at any given point in time so that they don't overcrowd them right i'm sure there are some exper experiments on this will continue to happen uh, uh, this definitely has to be noted and uh, what's uh, interesting to see here is the scale and speed at which technology is been adopted uh, by the delivery systems 
saying that it was really astonishing to see how the market has responded uh, we also need to see how the future looks like uh, could you tell us about the future outlook since there has been a considerable shift towards uh, uh, the online delivery with the trends we just saw yeah absolutely gaurav some of the focus areas which uh, businesses are looking at are uh, you know a few that we identified one is of course uh, they are maximizing the off premises the brands are providing dedicated facilities wherein uh, either you can go and pick up the orders or there are uh, the ghost kitchens that we talk about which uh, are delivery only where you just food cook the food and use the delivery services to uh, deliver the food so off premise is going to be one of the critical strategies out there and there's a host of tech transformations that we are seeing uh, i'm sure there will be more and more innovations that will come come around that be it iot or using uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning to make uh, you know to enhance the decision making process with limited human intervention and we did talk about the location how the location technology could be utilized in multiple areas or we will see some examples on the voice in the following slides right so tech transformations will happen uh, then there is a focus on maximizing the channels uh, of delivery right it, there is a going growing trend of maximizing the channels uh, for convenience and uh, use the technology to make it happen right so it can be categorized into two parts uh, one is delivery options and the other one is a delivery channel in case of delivery options of course there is a, a tried and tested method of using human driven uh, uh, delivery methodology delivery option but apart from that the businesses are experimenting with uh, delivering with robots or delivering with drones or with parachutes so there are few companies that have been uh, experimenting here and we got to see how they uh, turn out to be you know how successful are these going to be now looking at the channels uh, multiple experiments here to increase the reach and convenience uh, and the funnel right so uh, i mean dominos has more than 18 uh, channels that user can use to order a pizza right so that could include ordering by tweet or utilization of a virtual assistant which could be a chatbot or uh, we have seen that few of the businesses are using uh, voice skills you know alexa or a google skills to order the food and uh, you know just it is could have could be one of an examples and we have also seen that uh, people are developing smart watch application not just a smartphone but a companion application on smart watch uh, primarily because uh, smart watches are one of the uh, hardwares that are getting sold quite a bit so probably that's an area to uh, be present there <coughs> uh and we have also seen some experiments on uh, developing applications on smart tv uh, wherein the pizza delivery you know or rather you know the ordering could be done just sitting in front of the tv using an application that is installed on that um recently we saw another experimentation wherein uh, uh, you know building an app into the car your car dashboard where you can order uh, place an order while while you are driving or while while you are planning going towards the uh, restaurants we see that this uh, experiment was conducted by uh, pizza hut partnering with accenture and visa right so these are some of the uh, strategies that we are seeing and also i think we also recently noticed that dominos has launched a car side delivery not just car side pickup so and these experiments will continue to happen and the other area is uh, being able to communicate and we discussed about it uh, in, in an earlier slide and uh, moving on we also see that this is the right time where businesses uh, uh, should focus on being online and uh, because the consumers are looking to and the trends are that you know users are preferring online ordering and online um, uh, being on the safer side of it so that that also focuses on getting online right uh, the other i mean when you do all these things the combination of this is that you know we generate a lot of data and how do we analyze how do we keep track or how do you even uh, 
create profiles that we could uh, generate inferences of these data is going to be very critical. Now we helped uh, helping our some of our customers to better serve their customers by using the data collected uh, to personalize and provide better recommendations, right? So these are some of the focus areas are currently the businesses can look at. Uh, I'm excited to see how uh, companies will adapt to such business changes and uh, strike their way uh, through the current situation. Also, uh, I got this surprising data, which I wanted to discuss with you. Uh, it's about expected consumer behavior pre and post COVID. Here we see that the consumers in most of the countries show a positive intent to shop for groceries in person. How do we see this when we are talking about a surge in online delivery for essential goods? I think this is uh, the data is kind of expected when uh, the COVID related shutdowns happened and there was an intense lockdown process. And we saw that a lot of people are going online to uh, purchase things, groceries, food or whatever it is. And uh, during that period of time, the waiting period for some of these online delivery partners was more than two weeks. Now I myself have experienced some of these uh, uh, challenges, but once uh, the, the geo started uh, relaxing some of these measures, uh, we saw that people were venturing out at least to buy basic grocery or you know, where they wanted to have a look and feel of the product before they buy, uh, especially when it comes to food items. So we saw that some percentage of people going out and in result, as a result of that, we saw that uh, the waiting period on the delivery platforms were reduced right to a certain extent so in my opinion these will balance out there would be a percentage of people who would always want to venture out uh, take a little bit of risk with social distancing and everything else to buy the essentials and there will be a percentage of people who would stick to online ordering and going with it exactly i, I think there are uh, both sides of people who would want to do uh, like you mentioned uh, Shrindi, I think we are running out of time here. Uh, can we wrap this up with some pointers to keep in mind? Uh, core takeaway perhaps? Or how do we apply digital lessons to our uh, business scenarios? Uh, what are your views on that? Absolutely. I think uh, the previous few slides that we talked about focus areas for the businesses and uh, what is the what is happening in the industry, we could categorize them or, you know, put them into a kind of a structure where uh, businesses can look at. And from our perspective, I think uh, these are the few points, the eight points that we have put together uh, where uh, any business can, the delivery organizations or delivery businesses can look at. The first one would be uh, very quickly going through uh, all these, all of these is, is to redefine the value proposition. I mean, looking at uh, the user becomes the center focus for the entire business and looking at customer convenience and finding ways to inspire the uh, user with a shopping experience, either creating an educational shopping experience or an exciting shopping experience. And also retail and uh, you know, food is a value, is a highly competitive business. And so creating those uh, value for money and being very competitive and low cost operating models is going to be very, very critical. So. So the first point would be all looking at the value proposition on the redefining that. Second system, uh, second point is about uh, ecosystem, right? Uh, we are in a we are in a uh, time wherein having partnership to deliver your um, goods and material is going to be very create very 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 critical. So to identify and build possible partnerships. Uh, for the last mile delivery, logistics, distribution, these are going to be very, very critical and we will have to, the businesses will have to forge those partnerships in a mutually beneficial manner. The third one is, uh, point is looking at uh, digital platform alternatives or, you know, what are the platform alternatives that we are looking at. Uh, we have to be present on food delivery platforms or an aggregator platforms. Uh, to adopt to this emerging ecosystem. Uh, there are multiple ways to achieve this. Um, either you can go at an independent, invest your money into building a platform, uh, 
not every organization can do that or go with a third party again with a couple of uh, ways you know either they uh, handle order taking and payments and leave the delivery to you or they do uh, everything you know and they take the order and delivery on behalf of restaurants or go with an hybrid model wherein both in house as well as uh, third party platforms which can be uh, merged to provide you the delivery delivery option so that's from a platform alternative perspective uh, and it is also probably a, a, a focus area to look at uh, building a robust digital solution uh, again keeping customer experience or consumer experience at the core of it and looking at the third party flat uh, third party integrations that we need and also looking at how we can analyze or how we can provide a customized experience or a personalized experience to the consumers who are buying into it and also to look at from an analytics perspective what data we can gather and how how we can utilize to improve improve our service to service offering to our customers or improve the operational efficiency so looking at a digital solution that covers some of these aspects could be another point uh, for us to consider uh, then of course we talked about uh, delivery channels and delivery modes there is a whole bunch of them uh, evaluating them and looking at whether some of these can help to increase the funnel increase the reach out to reach to the end users and decrease the pain con consumer pain pain points so that's another area for uh, businesses to look at and given the kind of uh, times that we live in uh, it i'm sure i'm very positive that um, the new and new businesses and new and new niche businesses will emerge out of this and we all we are already seeing that uh, some of these businesses are looking at uh, creating some new niches right it could be food waste apps or we saw some pet food apps and you know apps for the virtual kitchen or the cloud kitchen that we discussed about it so uh, we are very positive that some of these niches would emerge out of this whole scenario that we are living through and yeah i mean at a high level it is probably also a right time for one to consider redesigning the organization with the digital at the core right this could be a major operation uh, but uh, looking at the entire digital strategy and the roadmap and building or procuring products around it is uh, is could be a it could be an area for 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 some of the businesses to focus on right and we have been working with few of our customers in helping them with this digital strategy and product roadmap building and you know executing some of these uh, uh, strategic initiatives for them and and we see that there is a lot of focus on that area the final uh, point is uh, being able to reinvent ourselves uh, to survive and uh, probably grow in this uh, difficult times you know being connected to our customers and our colleagues and everyone uh, in the entire world and being very user focused understanding the user pain points being designing our systems and services to eliminate them or we also be aware of our changing regulations uh, due to the current scenario and how do we adapt to that how do we move forward with it so this would be some of the uh, you know these are the eight points that we look at it and we also looked at a slide uh, wherein uh, what is the future of food is going to be from a two uh, different perspective so uh, this i mean if you look this is pretty self explanatory and uh, when you look at it uh, where users are going to fall into or where the where various food delivery services are going to be there are two axes that we are looking at here where do i want to get my groceries and how much work do i want to do to get my food done so you can look at the traditional in store experience which is where i go to a uh, you know store and i buy my food and i get my hands dirty to cook that's that's my food or i get a home chef who will come to my home and get everything that is needed and cook it for cook and deliver it for me so those could be two extremes and a lot of these uh, newer ventures and newer businesses that we are seeing are falling in this quadrant and various uh, locations right it could be drive through or uh, fresh meal kits or you know 
ball plays, you know, click and collect and all these kind of things. So we see that uh, as we move forward, uh, these, some of the businesses could come across, uh, you know, emerge out of this ecosystem. And this is where our future of food is going to be. Wow. Uh, these are very valuable inputs uh, on the delivery market for me as well as our attendees here. Uh, Srinidhi, before we jump into the question and answer segment, uh, any final thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, it's a time where we all of us need some inspiration. So we came across this quote, uh, which was made famous by one of the books. And I think the key to survival is our ability to change, innovate and adapt quickly. Uh, is 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 what it is going to be so i think in this you know testing times all of us need to be uh, agile all of us needs to be uh, adapt uh, adapt uh, to adapt to the changes that is that are happening and we all need some inspiration i guess we need to run faster so that's where it is exactly uh, this is a very great thought to end with uh, especially when we are seeing such a surge in numbers of uh, covid-19 uh, everyone needs to stay strong and move on i think that's what i can say uh, from the thought uh, our shift in mindset will not only elevate it to become the new normal for delivery uh, but a method to solving problems and creating solutions as well with this note, let's end this session. Thank you so much, Srinidhi. Uh, your, uh, and uh, let, let's just start the question and answer round. Uh, we'll try and take as many questions as possible, uh, but the interest of time, uh, we, we might have to skip a few. A question is from Kevin. Uh, Kevin here is asking that uh, e-commerce apps have uh, existed uh, even before the pandemic what ux improvements or adaptations do these apps have to undergo now yeah i think uh, uh, there are a few areas that we could look at i think we did cover that as part of uh, our slide to some extent uh, some of the key areas is uh, the way we are communicating the safety awareness or we are communicating about how much care we are taking you know, towards delivering our products that's that is where you know we ensure our customers that we are covering all the bases that's one part of it and probably second part of it is the newer uh, payment aspects that is coming into picture because you know as we've seen that some of the some of them are not taking any uh, transactions at the time of delivery the cash on delivery or any credit card transactions so mostly they are shifting into a prepaid uh, deliveries only. So those could have a slighter change in terms of these uh, e-commerce applications and their experience uh, while users are placing the orders. And I've seen one more thing that probably has come into picture is uh, some of these uh, delivery platforms had a surge in their orders and due to that they had to have uh, an additional experience where user can choose the slots or uh, choose the slots to get the food delivered and those user experiences could also change slightly changes in the uh, app recently that they've just gone for prepaid orders or uh, the things which you mentioned uh, the next question is from francis uh, Francis is asking, how important is it to have multiple delivery channels for uh, order sourcing? Uh, which are the best options to explore right away? Uh, that's a, an interesting question. So, I mean, multiple organizations have experimented with a whole bunch of uh, channels out here. And, uh, you know, as much as 18 channels from... Uh, no dominoes and few others right so i think the best approach to look at it is uh, first of all definitely the you know, most of the organizations have a mobile app on a website and the, the critical channels that they cover and and next best approach would be to look at the, the look at the analytics look at how the users are engaging and experiment with some of these channels and uh, see if that's working for them and keep on increasing it or keep on building on that so that would be the right approach here 
the next question shrindi is from mark uh, mark is asking as to how can we understand consumer mindsets uh, better through the research uh, when uh, when uh, in the recent times we can't meet them face to face yeah so i think uh, that's the order of the day everybody are online everybody are working from remote so given those scenarios uh, uh, one of the challenges uh, especially these challenges can be handled better if we have good analytics built into our products and our channels right if there is a way that we can understand user behavior through the analytics uh, that would be the best approach to do this and we have been working with few of our customers to build this you know in some cases where there hasn't been good analytics implementation or good platform implementation out there and adding uh, these critical uh, uh, pointers where users are behaving and uh, getting them logged into the systems is going to be very critical and an analysis of that to understand the user behavior or tweak the product based on how the users are you know consuming it exactly uh, data is becoming a very uh, key factor for all our uh, delivery platforms to move ahead in these times uh, the next question is from dave dave is asking do you see any regional variations in consumer behavior uh, i'm very sure about that you know every region has its its uh, behavior in terms of uh, you know how they responded to these uh, covid shutdowns and how they are responding to the various uh, products on the platforms and especially in us we saw that there was a huge surge in the online deliveries and uh, to an extent even uh, on you know i was mentioning about it in you know, almost two weeks of uh, waiting period for some of the grocery delivery applications and we also noticed that uh, a lot of online streaming and these kind of behaviors were uh, were are also very prominent in uh, some of the regions right uh, again some of the countries all had uh, digital like digital payments getting more used more extensively and i'm sure in a country like india where cash is the king is kind of moving towards the digital payments and higher usage of that so uh, i think the behaviors will certainly change and uh, there is good amount of data on how these behaviors are on the region wise yeah uh, shrindi there is an observation here by vritant uh, vritant is saying that i have observed the recent fall in demand has increased the appetite of many industries to move to digital platforms uh, to reach out to more uh, customers especially in the emerging markets absolutely i couldn't agree more than that so uh and i think we did talk about it as to how uh, organizations are building their channels or building their user experience to reach out to more and more customers and keep them uh keep them updated about how safely they are uh, delivering and all these activities and uh, the user experience changes so i guess that's that is expected i'm i would be uh very positive that there will be some newer business cases would come out of this entire scenario and we might see something really exciting coming out definitely we we are here to see more use cases to uh, all the technology applications which we just saw uh with this uh, we conclude our webinar here thanks again shrindi i'm sure uh, this will inspire all our attendees uh, who are planning to venture more into the online delivery market space yeah. thank you thanks, everyone Kara. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining the webinar today. Signing off. Yep. Thanks. Bye.